Hello again, Pastor Jason from Methow Calvary Chapel Fellowship. We're going to be talking about Joshua chapter 7 tonight. This is our pre-study. I hope you were blessed by chapter 6 with the seven trumpets as they marched around the city of Jericho. They blew the trumpets. They obeyed God. The city came down. And it's just a neat, for me, the seven trumpets of the phrases that Jesus cried out from the cross. And those seven statements, the last statements of Jesus were very... Um, inspiring and needful for us. Uh, we find out, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Um, all the way to, it is finished. And those statements just let us know that God accepted Jesus' sacrifice on our behalf, and we are free to be with him. But the illustration with the children of Israel, they marched, they battled, the walls came down, they went straight up. It was great, but then God says, but... And that's where we'll pick up tonight. There was sin in the camp. Even though God brought them a wonderful victory, there was sin in the camp. And so when they went to the next battle, they were defeated. So let's, let's just read that chapter right now. First of all, let's say a little prayer. Father, we pray that you just would give us understanding of your word and enlightenment to what it means to us, the technical meaning, but then also that personal application to each of us. We just pray your blessing on this time of study, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Joshua chapter 7, but, but the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed things, so the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth Aven on the east side of Bethel, and spoke to them, saying, Go up and spy out the country. So the men went up and spied out Ai. I guess it's pronounced I, but I can't confirm that. Verse 3, And they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not let all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and attack Ai. Do not weary all the people there, for the people of Ai are few. Now we'll find out in Joshua chapter um, Eight, that it was actually about 6,000 fighting men in Ai. And you notice uh, there's no prayer here. They just go up and look and go, yeah, we got this thing. We just took the city of Jericho with no problem. And Ai is small and puny and we'll just, we'll take it too. So verse four, about 3,000 men went up from there, from the people, but they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai struck down about 36 men. So uh, the battle opens up and 36 guys die. This is very sad. For they chased them from before the gate as far as Shebarim and struck them down on the descent. Therefore, the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening and the elders of Israel and they put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, notice now, they didn't pray before the battle but they prayed after the battle. And Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Oh, that we had been content to dwell on the other side of the Jordan. That sounds like us a lot of the time when we're defeated in something, we, we go to these extremes. Well, why did you even do this at all, God? We're just going to destroy us and and, and we get so short-sighted and we don't th look at things the way that God would have us to look at them. And Joshua's falling into the same, same sort of pattern that we often can. And he says in verse 8, O oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turns its back before its enemies? For the Canaanites and the inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us and cut off our name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? So the Lord replied to Joshua, get up. No, he probably didn't say it like that. Get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned. Now, he's, Joshua's crying out to God, but God's going, there's something that has to be dealt with, Joshua. There is sin in the camp. Remember, in Joshua chapter 6, that God said, don't take of any of the accursed stuff. And everything um, that's tempered with fire, the gold, uh, the bronze, I, I think it said iron there. I'll have to look that up. But uh, th those items were to be brought into the temple as a tribute to the Lord, but all the other stuff, they were just to destroy it and, and, and burn it. And we know that a guy named Achan 
had a, a, a different thought about that. So God's saying, saying to Joshua, this isn't a time for weeping. This is a time for cleaning. You need to clean house. You need to find out, get to the bottom of this, and let's let's get it right so that you can get your relationship with me back on track. Verse 11, Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my my covenant, which I commanded them. So God gave a direct covenant, don't covenant, do not take anything from Jericho. And, uh, and they did. For they have even taken some of the accursed things and have both stolen and deceived. And they have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed from among you. So an ultimatum, God says, you've got to clean up camp or else I won't be with you. And so Joshua prefers the presence of the Lord, especially for such a great people as they wander through the, excuse me, not wander, as they conquest in the promised land. He really wants the commander of the armies of the Lord to lead them. So, verse 13, get up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, because thus says the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in your midst, O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from before you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribes which the Lord takes shall come according to their families, and the family which the Lord takes shall come by households, and the household which the Lord takes shall come by man. Then it shall be that he who is taken with the accursed things shall be burned with fire and all that he has because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he has done disgraceful things in Israel. So Joshua arose early in the morning and brought Israel by the tribes, by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. Then he brought the clan of Judah and he took the family of the Zarites and, the, and he brought the family of the Zarites man by man and Zabdi was taken. Then he brought the household. Then he brought his household, man by man. And Achan, the son of Carmi, was the son of Dabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. So God's just narrowing it down. And God could have just said, hey, it's, it's Achan. Uh, but they wanted to build suspense, or God wanted to build suspense in this. And I don't know, possibly give Achan opportunity to... Uh, cry out for mercy ahead of time. Verse 19, now Joshua said to Achan, my son, I beg you, give glory to God, to the Lord of, to the Lord God of Israel and make confession to him and tell me what you have done. Do not hide it from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoils, a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted I coveted them and took them, and there they are hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent with the silver under it. Notice um, it's going to mention silver under it twice. Uh, maybe that's a good thing for you to look up. Why, why is the Holy Spirit giving us that nugget? But you see here that first he saw these things, uh, the lust of the eye, and then he coveted the lust of the flesh, if you will, and then he took them. And he acted on his covetousness. So when you see something that's enticing you, don't go back and, and meditate on it, right? Just uh, cut it off, stop it before it, it gets you. So verse 22, Joshua sent messengers and they ran to the tent and there it was, hidden in his tent with the silver under it. Again, there's that interesting, why does the Holy Spirit say that? Uh, silver, of course, is the medal of redemption. And I'll let you think about the rest. Verse 23, and they took them from the midst of the tent, brought them to Joshua, to all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. Then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, the garment, the wedge of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had. Notice his wife's not party of this. Um, just uh, must have been the, the family members who were all in on this. And they brought them to the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. Now, notice um, Joshua never attacked Achan. He was against the sin, and he's cleansing uh, the people of the sin, but he's not, he's not like 
you know, it, it's God loves the sinner. He hates the sin. It is true that the sinner, uh, the unregenerate person, is is what gets thrown into hell. God doesn't just throw the sin into hell. Um, so we have to deal with that. But Joshua wasn't, um, he was he was for Achan, but there was no sign of repentance from Achan here. Just sad that he got caught. We've heard that before. And Joshua said, why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned him with stones and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Now remember the consequences of Achan's sin was the defeat of Israel, the loss of their, uh, their, their, their relationship and the joy of the Lord and uh, the death of 36 men, uh, fighting men. So this is a big deal on Achan's shoulders. And it says, verse 26, then they raised over him a great heap of stones, still there to this day. Notice in Joshua that uh, there's a lot of commemorative stone piles that Joshua says are still there to this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Therefore, the name of the place has been called the Valley of Achor to this day, or literally the Valley of Trouble, because Achan troubled Israel in that day. That chapter is a good illustration, and it's interesting. In the seven years of wandering, I said it again, in the seven years of conquest, it was the only time that they were defeated, but it was a big defeat. And it seems as if the confidence of the people led them into the battle without first consulting the Lord, praying, seeing what, what God wanted to do about it. And we have to remember that yesterday's triumphs are no guarantee of tomorrow's success. I think it sounds better. Yesterday's success is no guarantee of tomorrow's triumph. You see, God is a God of, of relationships. I mean, he's, his new mercies are new every day. He wants us to come to him daily and seek out uh, his help, his, his grace and mercy to help in our time of need. And this definitely was a time of need for the children of Israel, but they didn't walk by faith. They had a victory by faith, but they didn't continue to walk by faith. And Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 that if we've done everything we can to stand, to stand therefore, and that's one thing that God said, they were not able to stand before their enemies. Why? Because they did not continue to walk by faith. And, and the, the biggest thing that they did, I would have to say, is Ephesians chapter 6. It says, above all else, take up your shield of faith. They had let down the shield of faith. They said, wow, we, we, don't, we don't need to pray. We don't need to be sanctified. We can just go right into this thing with our own, our own personal thoughts about it and not seek the Lord's, the Lord's uh, advice. And it brought about defeat. So it's just a good reminder for us that we need to seek the Lord daily. You know, I pray, God, please don't let my decisions, my, my work, you know, if I make bad decisions, people could get hurt, and I would never want that to happen. And so it's like, God, please, no one's gotten hurt yet, but let's not just go on, on rules and, and regulations. Let's go by what, how are you going to lead us today? And we all need to do that. So uh, take a look at this chapter, read about it, pray about it, and then join us on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock as we premiere on YouTube at Graphite 7 is our, our channel. And if you want to subscribe and click the notification bell, you will get these notifications. And, and I guess if, you, uh, if I have 100 subscribers, then I can do something different with my channel, which I don't even know what that is. But if you click that, then I'll find out. But I'm not going to look in advance because <laughs> who has time for that? Anyways, now I'm going to look now that I said that. Anyways, thanks for joining us this evening. And let me just pray for us all. Father, we just pray your blessing on us all. We pray, God, that we would find our hope in your word. God, you tell us um, in so many ways that your word holds us together, our lives together, even the unseen elements that everything is made of are held together by your spoken, um, your spoken word. And we just we thank you, God, that your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our paths. God, that it is good and and very nourishing for us. And we just pray, Lord, that we would be people who are about being in your word and letting your word be in us, and, and through that, helping us to bring conquest uh, in our own lives. And we pray this in uh, Jesus' name. Amen.